Welcome to the Shoot in the Cube podcast, the podcast that's hotter than your competition cooker and your first wife. We'll be talking barbecue and more with one of the top pitmasters in the game. Get ready for juicy tips, saucy tricks, and sizzling stories that'll leave you hungry for more. Let's start shooting the cube. Here's your host, Heath Riles. How's it going, everybody? Today, we are joined by Henry Evans, who is the founder and president of the Memphis Barbecue Network. And of course, my lovely co-host, my wife, Candace Riles. So, Henry, how are you today? Very good. Thank you for having me on today. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Well, me too. You know, a lot of our listeners uh, really, uh, some of them have a lot of questions about the Memphis Barbecue Network. And, you know, a lot of people know me from kind of cutting my teeth on the Memphis circuit is what a lot of them call it out there. Um, and so why don't you kind of tell everybody, uh, I guess I kind of put out some questions. What did you first do before you got into barbecue or how did you get into barbecue? I actually got into barbecue through my lovely wife, Kelly who was a, a volunteer for Memphis in May and a rep for Memphis in May. And they were doing barbecue contests all over the southeast for Memphis in May 2002 through 2006. Uh, in 2006, at the end of the season, uh, Memphis in May decided we're not doing any more contests. We're only going to do the big contest and the other contest, uh, we're not going to represent those at all. So – a group of five couples, and uh, that'd be Randy and Kathy McGee, Gary and Sharon Kuntz, Frank and Mary Horner, uh, David and Suzanne Ray, and myself and Kelly sit down and said, we, we hate to see those 30-some-odd contests go away. So we sit down and formed an LLC to be able to take over from the Memphis in May, uh, use their program for scoring for, for, for a few years, and was able to keep it going. We had to put up, we all had to put up some money to get the insurance and everything to get everything going, but uh, here it is 17 years later, and we're still going strong. Wow. And so for the listeners that, does, that doesn't know about the Memphis Barbecue Network. Can you kind of describe what it what it does and how it is as far as the contest goes? Yes, we're we're uh, not like the other city named Barbecue Society, but with us, we're we're all about pork. We have uh, whole hog, shoulder or pulled pork, and ribs, and those three are cooked and grated on a blind table. And then the top three from the whole hogs, top three from the shoulder, and top three from the ribs are then selected for the finals round where they would entertain four judges on site to be able to show that the uh, who's the best of the best. So you don't have to score well in each category. You just got to be the best that day in one of the three. That's right. We don't do chicken, brisket, but a lot of times on Friday nights, that's when we have those contests. Ancillaries. 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 Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense. I know a lot of contests add chili, margarita. Dessert. I mean, my, my favorite. What? Dessert. Dessert. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about Candace has got several uh, dessert wins uh, on several uh, sanctioning bodies and all that. And, um, and you're right. That's... That is one thing I like about the MBN, being around the Memphis area and kind of cutting my teeth with it. And my first contest was actually uh, South Haven of 2007. I don't know if you realize that. And was that, that was the a, very first that time? That was the very first time. And so that was the very first time that I cooked a Memphis-style contest. Before that, I actually started 10 years prior to that in KCBS in my hometown of Ashland, believe it or not. I'm not going to hold that against you there. <laughs> We, well, but we do miss you out on the circuit, but I understand you're busy. I, you know what? And I, I tell Candace that I do want to come back and play some. We'll be at South Haven this year. I always use that as a tune-up for Memphis in May. Mm -hmm. And as long as I'm physically able, I, for some for some odd reason, uh, Murfreesboro, Illinois was my first grand championship, right? Oh. is what I kind of equate to my first. The one I won on, you know, I wouldn't cook him with anybody else. It was under my team. And so I didn't. I don't equate any other grands I've won, mm -hmm. 
you know, none when I cook with tin bones or boars not out or anybody like that. Uh, and, and so Murfreesboro holds that special place in my heart. And so I go back and I'm going to keep going that contest every year. And so it's about like South Haven. I think how many times have we won? I think eight times is what I've won Murfreesboro, if I'm not mistaken. Well, the the last few years, Kelly and myself been have been ripping the contest, so we're not giving it up, and Amy's not going to let us either. I mean, it, it's a uh, you know now that you've been there the last few years, the hospitality at uh, at that contest, and I don't know if it's just not only the hospitality. I think it's just the atmosphere and what they bring to barbecue in general in Murfreesboro. I mean, they roll out the red carpet to teams, to judges, to the community. I mean, everybody is involved in some sort of way. When you roll into town and all those apples are hanging up down the city streets coming into town, everybody knows it's that time of year. It's a festival coming to town. And they know there's going to be a big fish fry and they're going to feed about the entire town. You're exactly right about the entire town. You better get in line early if you want to eat (laughs) that fish fry. And, you know, I've never stood in line for the fish fry. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all have, but they do unlimited barbecue as well. Yeah. You know, which is a, a good thing. So, uh, I think what is it like twenty two dollars a person or something? It's nearly not not bad at all. We've always been so busy with getting everything ready for the contest, we've missed that part of it. So tell me, what all goes into getting ready for a contest, Henry? As far as the rep side goes, well, with Kelly being the the contest coordinator and the secretary, a lot of this starts. We're actually in contact with contest almost year round. Uh, but especially this time of year when the season's starting, we're, we're, we're making sure we have all the contests lined up. We got the dates down so we don't have conflicts. Sometimes people want to change a, a date one way or the other, and it can create a conflict with other contests. Uh, we have a, a founders meeting four times a year, but we have a reps meeting a couple times a year. The one being in the spring is a big one. We sit down at a table with a board and go over all the contests for the year. All the reps sort of pick out their favorite contest. We already know from the organizer who their favorite reps are. So if that's who they want, we do everything we can to make that happen. We get all the scorecards available. Uh, All the placemats now have to be printed. We used to use paper plates, but now we have the placemats getting everything ready we we run through any upgrades on our uh, our scoring program our scoring program we ran in beta for a couple years before we ever felt like we trusted it enough to get it out and that makes sense but it does it you get everything ready to go uh get everybody signed up and then you just wait for what's going to happen to cause it not to work like you planned it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, talking about what all goes into it, and we were kind of talking about Murfreesboro, you know, being my sweet spot and y'all being the rep there and all. What What's some of the most classic and well-known MBN contests that's kind of been a staple, you know, for y'all, uh, past, present, and future? What do you, you know? Well, some some of the past, the one in the past that's always been so so large has been the pig jig in Vienna. Yeah. <laughs> and – the last few years, I'm happy to say that the Memphis teams have been placing extremely well in Georgia, and in years past, that wasn't always the case. Well, Australia, you know, uh, yeah. you know who won that thing twice, don't you? Yeah, I believe I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got. You know, they used to tell me that, and I, I tell everybody about Vienna, Georgia. If you think you can cook in the Memphis area. And this is not go for just Memphis style contests. Go to Georgia and cook. It will humble you. It's different. You will learn yeah. how to cook, whether it's whatever sanctioning body it is. If you're the best here and you really want to be the best, go there. They those, will humble the, you. Those guys live it. They because live it. Un- unlike uh, Memphis and May where they just set up, those are permanent setups at the, at the pig jig. These people lease the, yeah. these spots. That would be pretty cool to have something around here like that. It yeah, would be. That, well, maybe they can that. do something like that once the river becomes so small they can't get a good contest in there, which I think is happening this year. You know, I really hate to see what's happening to Memphis in May. Um, but, you know, it's not all Memphis in May's fault either. You no, know, they so. don't own that park, and so they can only 
play by the rules that they're given, unfortunately. And when you have uh, – and this is just my – uh, point of view, and I don't know everything about it because I'm not. I don't try to involve myself in everything that, that right. don't involve me. But as an outsider looking in, you have people in St. Louis, architect and design firm, trying to tell the city of Memphis what to do with the River Parks Commission, you know, on how yeah. to hold stuff, and then you have to kind of make way for everybody that uses it, and it just don't work for everybody like that anymore. And, no. and as far as running a business, you know, we're very fortunate to run a business. And like the NBN, you know, you can't lose money every year. No. And so if you take the teams down just from a di- business standpoint from 200, 225 from what it used to be, 240 at one time, yep. you know, they've steady lost space as they've developed on that end of the river. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, now they're down to 140 just from a financial standpoint. Either A, you got to make that money up in sponsors, or B, you keep giving it away, hauling you're the largest price purse mm-hmm. and where's the money coming from well it comes in a reserve well before long there won't be any reserve to do it and you can't keep going up on the teams because you keep you're going to price them out you're going to price them out of the park so it's definitely a double-edged sword memphis in may has got to handle um, i would think that they have some plans in place but you know i really don't know me personally i like tiger lane i know a lot of people don't it's only reason I really like it is logistical reasons. <laughs> Let's face it, the park being one way in and one way out, a big hill. I mean, it's don't get me wrong, the river view is beautiful. There's nothing like it. Uh, but who knows? I hope the future of the contest is carries on another 100 years. I do too. I hope it carries on and they're able to, to get it all squared away. For them to have to cut back to size with as many teams from all over – the country and the world oh, yeah. would would like to come and cook in it that they could find a spot, whether it be Tiger Lane or uh, Fairground or somewhere where they can have it. But you also, they want to keep it tied in with the music best. So I think you've almost got to build a destination for all this, for a permanent home of it. Exactly. And, so, and, I, and, and maybe Tiger Lane is eventually it if they're putting up three hotels and – you know, redoing the Coliseum and, and this and that. and I could see so many avenues. It would be nice to walk from where I was at in that Tiger Lane last year to a hotel 300 yards away. Yes. And a hotel bar and all that. Don't you know those places would do some business? Yes, because <laughs> it's what barbecue teams eat barbecue and they drink. And they drink. Yes. And, barbecue and you, teams so that eat brings barbecue? me into. I, I said barbecue teams eat barbecue? Well, some. Yeah, a little, but <laughs> but they do drink a lot. That's true. I, well, you know, I know true. you said Vienna, Georgia. So before I move on to the next question, is there any other contest, you know, well, we have past, present, future that you really just – The Bartlett contest is really coming along strong. Started out as a specialty contest. It's coming along. Uh, South Haven's always been Big a huge draw. There'll be 60, 70 teams there. And with – each if each team was doing all three, you'll have more entries at South Haven than you will at Memphis in May. Wow, you don't and, realize that. Yeah, and with uh, just to- Atoka has only been around for ten years, I think. That's a big one. There'll be, I think, uh, it's next week, mm-hmm. and it's fifty-five shoulders, no, fifty-five ribs. 51 shoulders, and 14 hogs. 14 hogs. That's 14 a good, hogs. That's a I think the most draw. before is, what, been 12, 13? Is that 14 this year? Mm-hmm. Wow. And, you, and you never know. You never know what's going to happen because a lot of teams use a toka to tune up, too. A toka and South Haven are definitely two of the biggest tune-ups before Memphis in May. And I mean. What was it two years ago when Myron won Memphis in May? He cooked at a toka and didn't get in the top ten mm-hmm. in anything, and he goes down to Memphis in May and wins. So he knows what he's doing, yeah. but, but you know, he's old. You know, there's always <laughs> been a saying, and I don't know if this is true, but they say if you ever win South Haven, nobody's ever left South Haven and won Memphis in May. And, you know, I never bought into that theory until I got fourth at South Haven last year and then turned around and won first place ribs yep. at That's Memphis it. in May. Yeah. And I don't know. Have you thought about it that way? You've always heard yeah. that too. I mean, I know. No, I, I, last year's a blur for me. The, ba- <laughs> the, the baby, baby was born during <laughs> yeah, all yeah. of that, so I, don't, was, I didn't think about all that. Involved. But 
but no, that's a good point. I never always heard it. that from certain teams. You know, if you won South Haven, you weren't going to do any good at Memphis. And so I've always the one. Oh, I'm going to break that. I'm going to do this. And, you know, <laughs> and and so I don't know. It's always you're. I'm like you. A token South Haven too huge contest. We got uh, several contests down down on the Delta now. The the Delta the Battle Royale, the contest that at least represents and. I don't want to name them all because I'll miss one. Well, I've always yeah. said that one of my favorites is Oktoberfest. Yeah, by that far. We love Cleveland. One now. of yeah. my favorite contests. And it's downtown. It's just mm-hmm. a blast. I love it. W- one of the ones, you, it's new, it's only been around for two years, is we actually have one in Biloxi after Vienna. It's a small one, Yeah. but it's right on the water. Oh. It's in a campground, and it's on the water. It's... Uh, the judging area is the bar area, which really works well for the judges. <laughs> <laughs> but that that would uh, that Biloxi that would be pretty cool in the fall of the that year. That would. I feel like that when we're be. talking about classic contests, we we can't forget about one of my favorites. It's not around anymore, but I always like Newton, Mississippi. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was one of Newton's. my favorites. Um, and I know there were many more before. I didn't get introduced to barbecue till two thousand eight. So I've heard of many contests even before that that I was never a part of. I'm sure that were great as well, but I do really miss Newton, Mississippi. That was a great I one. Too. That well, was that was the first one from I remember the first one every year. It was and yeah, is in March and, usually, right? See, I was only introduced in 2004 or five when I met Kelly, and coming from the North Carolina mountains, well, barbecue just wasn't it just wasn't that big a deal. I mean, it never was. I came across. I came across from Western North Carolina, found out two things. College football is a big deal. Very big and deal. And barbecue there. is a really <laughs> big deal. I've always said, I, when we were talking about starting the, M, the MBN, I said, you know, I'm not so sure that I couldn't get this started as a religion if I could get the tax breaks. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You know, and, and, and I think one big thing that plays into the NBN, you know, you always hear on TV and everywhere you have the regions of barbecue. And to me, there's a misconception in the Memphis area, and it may just be me. But I don't think of dry ribs when I think of Memphis. Do you? No. no. I think of a wet rib. Mm-hmm. Everybody I know serves a muddy-style rib. Right. You know, sauce with some rub on top. And it's muddy. And, you know, you can get dry ribs. While we're known for dry ribs, it's because somebody put Rendezvous on TV and said, oh, well, they're home with a dry rib, you home know, Memphis. And that's that's great, but Rendezvous is not the only thing that's in Memphis. I mean, it's a great uh, family-owned business. They have raised and took care of some, you know, generations of waiters and waitresses in there and done a phenomenal job. And ice-cold beer, uh, you know, and great. Uh, it really is. But I, I hate that Memphis is known for a dry rib community when it's really not. And I, you know that's that's one of the things we wanted to push with the MBN, is to push barbecue Memphis style, low and slow. Um, we, you, you know you could you could cook things fast and hot, and I know people cook on the circuit fast and hot. And it's all changed now. <laughs> you can do it, but I like to be able for to see them get the smoke flavor into it. And sometimes that's hard to do. It is hard to do. It's different ways to manipulate that, too. Yep. And a lot of judges don't realize that, I don't think. At least it, when I judged the last contest, I think I judged was Water Valley, maybe. The last one, personally. No, I've judged one, just a KCBS and something else past that. But I think the last NBN was a Water Valley a few years mm, back. We judged at Marion. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did Judge Judge Marion. I forgot about that. But before that, we judged Water Valley, and I sat at the table. What I want to say, I think Steve Nichols was at the table, and I don't remember the other judges. Mm -hmm. But I could pick out commercial barbecue sauces, Mm -hmm. and I couldn't tell you whose meat it was. Right. But I know the taste of barbecue sauces and all that. And it was funny to me that none of the judges – because I asked, I said, how long have you been judging? You know, I want to know, no, have you been around for years, 14 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years? And I'm like, y'all don't know that what that sauce is? No. No. I'm like, all right, I got you. Well, I think that brings up another question. How how do you become an NBN judge? Can anybody become a judge? Well, that that's a really good question. It leads into the fact that we focused this year on having judges 
classes. We just had a judges class in Tyler Town, which was our contest last weekend. Right. We'll have another one at Water Valley. Uh, we will have a judges class at Murfreesboro this year. And there is another one. So that's basically anybody can sign up to take those classes. They come, they get trained and all of that. And then they can become a judge and start judging. What is it like uh, 59, 79? Yeah, small fee. $85? It's like $75, $80. And And you're going to get fed. A yearly fee if you want to keep it up. Yearly fee is $35 a year. You you pick up, uh, just pick up uh, our website, Mm -hmm. mbnbbq.com. And you can click on classes, and that's what we try to do. So our members pay $35 a year to be on the judges list. Mm-hmm. And then you can go to the website, pick out what contest you would like to go to. The organizer's name's there. Either shoot them an email or give them a ring, and you're on the list to judge the contest. Well, that's, that's pretty easy. simple. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Well, tell us through the years um, – I'm probably skipping around here on some of my stuff. Through the years, what has changed to the MBN? Well, I guess the one major change would be we went away from having on-site prelims. And to be honest, I'd love to have on-site prelims because it does make for, to me, it fills in the gaps and more judges get to interact with the teams. But we found over the years that teams, if they make finals, they, they're willing to do an on-site presentation, but to just set up and do one, they were they were, they just wouldn't do it. I mean, it's like, no, I'm not going to cook in it. I'll just cook uh, Kansas City barbecue, so I don't have to do that. Now we've got it where it's bright, blind, blind prelims. And you're part of the cause of that, too. <laughs> well, I mean, I knew I it mean, was, but I didn't want to tell the, yeah, the listeners I mean, that. Because, you know, I had times when we have two contests and people call, where's Keith cooking? I'm going to the other one. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. did get on a roll for you, a couple you, of years you in a row. A roll for a couple and, of years. I, and I told a lot of people that I was going to cut back, and everybody thought I was a joke. But I think, and I'm not saying this to gloat or anything like that, I, I think that I've done – really well by stepping back at the time I stepped back to let the NBN grow because I was probably intimidating to a lot of teams. Mm-hmm. We had stuff down to a science, a regiment, and when I go somewhere to cook, I'm like a machine. A lot of people don't realize it. Uh, I don't drink. I don't do anything when I'm cooking. Mm-hmm. I'm focusing on winning. And, you know, like you said a while ago, a lot of people letting the beer flow. They're just oh, having yeah. a good time. They're Party. talking to their buddies. You don't see me move out of my spot when I go to a contest. Mm-hmm. The way I look at it is I've tied up a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars, depending on how far I had to travel. Right. I'm coming there to take some money home. A hundred percent. I may not win the contest, but I ain't been to very many contests and been shut out. Mm-hmm. And I just look at things differently. If I'm gonna put in the effort, if I'm just gonna go blow two grand, hell I'm gonna go to Tunica or to a casino, exactly. have a concert and go have a grand time. Mm-hmm. But I just look at it as a business for me. Mm-hmm. And I always, when I, it took one time for me going to Nashville to a contest. <laughs> and I, mm-hmm. and, and I'll just flat out admit this. I got beat by a former teammate. I took two seconds and a third mm-hmm. behind Mark West at yep. 10 Bones. And I was puking drunk Thursday, and Friday of that contest. It was nobody's fault my own. Mm-hmm. My wife, said if I was going to act that way, I didn't need to be cooking contests and losing money, that I was better than that. So I went home, drew out a plan, and executed that plan. And now, here we are today. Here we are today. (laughs) It is. I mean, it's the to watch the NBN grow. And really, when we went away from Brian uh, on-site prelims, our team number exploded. We've got different places now we have a lot of new contests all over we we're losing some contests to kcbs but that's just from people they that, lose and they come back they lose they, yeah they do it for a while because it's just not the same the nbn contest is an event it's not just show up on saturday morning cook and you're done by saturday afternoon that's right give me my money 
Now, has the NBN ever thought about sanctioning some one day contests? Yeah, we do. We do sanction uh, what we call a specialty contest. We were really hoping to sanction the one down on Bill, but that didn't happen. <laughs> I won't get into that. Well, you know, I I agree with that. And uh, if I would have knew that that was coming, I probably could have intervened and helped a little bit because I do know people down that way. Well, we didn't know. We didn't know either. Yeah, it was so. just. I think it was all of just googling on a computer. Honestly, is what it all turned out. You know, and, bad as I'd say. Well, th- then it that falls on me that Memphis Barbecue Network's been around for seventeen years, and not enough enough people in Memphis know about it because we we cover nine states, and. When I was in Australia, people would ask me, Memphis barbecue. Yeah, I said, yeah. When you get into Memphis, try this and this and make sure you go there. And uh, then they call me up when they get back and go, man, that was really a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's it, it comes from all over. I mean, you go to Virginia for the Gaylax. They want to know, what do I want to eat when I get to Memphis? Talk to me, I'll tell you. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm glad you brought Galax up. That is one of my favorite contests, contest. too. I hate it that it's really 12 good. hours away. Yeah, the so violins right. are hanging outside out there. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, there's, there's some right there, here, yeah. a banjo and a fiddle. And, yeah. and, you know, that was, um, was that my second time to do? No, that was my first time I went there. And, you know, I got into cooking these dual contests. Mm-hmm. And this was back before the rule changed when it was all the own sites, too. And that's work. Finals. It was a lot of work. And, and that's when all the times were messed up. And you had like rib rib, chicken, pork pork, hog. You know, all the times were intermix and all the KCBS guys hated it. And all the NBN guys hated it. Everybody hated it because everybody's off their timelines. Yep. And I just took and divided all this out. And, you know, I was very fortunate enough. I walked away with a reserve grand and grand that day in Virginia. And I said, well, I want to win too. And I went the very next April to South Haven and won both of them. Yep. And then I'd done it again. Murfreesboro, did I do it somewhere else? No. I think those are the, those are the main ones I can't keep I up with it. Yeah, I don't know. You've, but you've it was, won a lot. Aren't but, you? but talking about Galax, yeah. I hate that it's over 12 hours away, but I absolutely love that contest. For being 110 degrees here, and then it's – yeah, I remember the first year we cooked it. I called her. She didn't go, and it was. I told her. I said it's eighty four degrees here in this parking lot, eighty two, and I said it's just nice here. You can barely. I said call, there's no though. phone service. I was about and to I'll say, never forget there's it. No it's, phone service. And there. she was like, "Oh, you're just probably drinking and partying. There's phone service there." And finally, everybody was like complaining about the cell phone service online, yeah. and you know, you had to be near the bar and connected to their to Wi Fi to make a call to be able to. Period. Do it. Yeah. But that or at the Hampton Inn. Other than that, you was lost. Like I grew up like ninety miles from Galax. Just really, there. yeah. So it's <clears> that's <throat> fascinating. I did not know that, and I never got used to the heat here either. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna tell you, this Memphis humidity can get to a man. Oh yeah, it can melt you. And that's that's why we don't really cook in July or August. And I we used to go to Water Valley. You know, talking about Water Valley, Gosh, I love hot. that contest. Love the festival <clears throat> there. But I'm gonna tell you, I don't. You know that another one that was always hot was Fun Fest. Oh my lord! That that one was always a hot one too. Well, Covington was always oh Covington uh, June. And, yes, yeah. you're right. And Covington, I, I remember the ants were always at Covington. Yeah, the ants, <laughs> they were always in the power. I remember that my power kept tripping. I was like, oh, it's something to do with your trailer. I'm like, I promise you, it's nothing to do with my trailer. To get an electrician here. Yeah. He pulled that panel off that box, and it looked like a ant colony inside of it you couldn't <laughs> yeah. you had to chip the dirt away to get the breaker out and he's like well i found the problem i said i knew it wasn't my trailer i mean good times well talking about all that what um you know i asked you about the current changes the ambians went through anything else besides just going to blind just going to blind we've been able to get more teams we're, we're, we we do sanction one day contest or what we call specialty events uh and I feel like that change just from a team perspective was kind of – I see both sides because some people were used to do – I mean, we were used to doing the on-site at one point, but I, I see both sides of wanting to do that versus you guys took into consideration a cost factor too because, you exactly. know, with the economy the way it is, everything – prices have risen on everything. 
and continue to rise. So from a cost standpoint, doing blind allows a team to cook a lot less meat versus the on-site you had three separate judges come for prelim, three separate judges. So three, you you know, say you had, you were doing ribs, you had to at least provide a slab of ribs per judge. Same with shoulder, a shoulder, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I can see both sides. And then also you have your one and two man teams who, you know, a lot of people are out here doing it by themselves and it makes it, I mean, don't get me wrong. There were, people doing it even with on site. Oh Terry was a workhorse. He was. Yes. Man. That man. <laughs> what was his last name, Terry? Um Um I can't think of his last name either, but I can picture his face. I wish I could too. But man, um all three categories. But yeah, it allowed a lot of those teams to feel like they could do better too because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people were scared of that factor if they were a one or two man team. They felt like Who's gonna run up maybe product? they Who's could do it, maybe they couldn't, them? maybe, you know but like I said, I see both sides of it. And I really do. Everything we did was to try to reduce costs. We right. we took away the fact that now if you make vinyls, you can't put out the china and right. the crystal yeah. and all that. We're we're making. It was uh, like going to the grove. Do you think it really? <laughs> do you think making the changes, Henry, looking at it? Do you think it really made it? Um, it showed these teams that didn't have the self confidence before that they can compete with the bigger guys because you've seen a lot of different teams start to final that never had final before. Right, and it was all off of that blind product. That blind and product that, that just told me no judge knew whose product that was. They weren't going off how expensive the rig was, exactly. what kind of grill they cooked on. Well, that shouldn't have been nothing, and it shouldn't have been. But sometimes appearance gets looked into when it shouldn't in that factor. But the cream still rises to the, the cream top. still rises to the top. If you know what you're doing now, yeah, if you know what you're doing. But I mean, right. I did have. Uh, but shit floats sometimes too. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Well, I've, I've seen that too, but I, I'll sit there at a table and a judge will say, "Well, I know whose box that is," and I go, "Well, whose is it?" And they tell me, and I, you know, and because I know whose it is, I'm I'm entering the. Score. You wouldn't want to take that bet with me, though. No, I wouldn't want to take that bet with you. <laughs> but ninety nine point nine percent of the time, a judge is, wrong. is, is wrong. He's You're wrong, right. but he's, right. he's he he really thinks he does because we take a lot of pride in. If we've got judges that are familiar with teams, they don't get on tables with those with teams. teams. Just, I mean, just as a double to help with the double blind, it just makes. I know makes y'all have better. always been good about checking that, and I know there's certain contests that you needed extra judges, and y'all would make sure if somebody was certified and you needed an extra judge off a exactly. team, it was usually somebody that didn't have anything to do with the cooking or, you know, something like that. But you also made sure that they didn't get put on the table with their own team's product Their own team's product and you know I, y'all have always run an integrity first contest i will say that um you know and and that's one thing about the nbn it i absolutely just love the the whole i don't know maybe i'm infatuated with ribs and people told me i was crazy and ribs would never do this and that and that's why i got so involved with it because i feel like whole hog is you have less people to compete against and if you get it right it's hard to beat now, I do have a yeah. funny story about Murfreesboro last year. Team shows up. They get there late. They're not there for the cook's meeting. It's only two people. And they're cooking all three. Okay, they're cooking all three. And all I see is a little drum smoker out there like you get it close. And you're cooking hog. Well, it's not a big hog. Okay, all right. We'll see. I said, you know, it has to be certain. Pay. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, that's fine. I said, so I sort of keep an eye on these guys the whole weekend. And never cooked MBN before. They drove down from Chicago. You know, God bless them. Let's, let's do this. I said, we're going to see what they got. I see. Hog, come, hog box comes in. And uh, well, we had seven hogs. He finished seven. Pull port. He finished next to last. And he didn't turn in his ribs. So I'm like, I got to go out here and talk to this guy. I got to find out what's going on. I mean, one, why didn't he turn ribs in? And two, what the hell was he cooking them? So I go out there and talk. He said, well, you, you hog. And that was okay, and it did. It had good flavor because I wanted 
you know, when I get a team like that, I want to taste it. Yeah. And see I if they're on him, any kind of a path. To, right. I gave him a, some feedback that he needed because it was good. I mean, it was. I was really amazed that it was t- had a great taste. And it, I said, "Well, where did you where did you cook the shoulder?" He goes, "That was on the hog." He built his shoulder box out, out of the hog. hog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. What about the ribs? He said, well, I couldn't get them cut out of the hog oh, good enough. No. <laughs> he mm. was trying to do the ribs. He was going to do all three out of the same hog. You have to give somebody an A for effort, though, right? Oh, I said, you you turn the stuff in, we're going to judge you. You know, we can I can DQ you all day long, but that doesn't do him or us any good. Right. That's right. I talked to him after he got his score sheet. And he was just happy as he could be. I said, well, you know, you, you finished last in hog. He goes, last? I finished seventh. Man, I finished in the top ten. Oh, Get, well, it right. <laughs> Get it right. Get it right. <laughs> well, you know, and, and that was – that's my biggest thing. You know, whole hog sometimes is a lost art. I hate to say it. It is a, a big lost art. And I don't mind cooking it at the contest that – pays for that hog right and what i mean by that is you can't hardly go buy just the hog you know for most of them running between 350 and 400 dollars nowadays mm-hmm. and then half teams are letting the meat market trim it now you know for another hundred bucks and every time you buy supplies and charcoal and wood and in first place don't pay but five or six hundred dollars you, you can't come out right. and that's the way i explain it as a business and so a lot of these teams want to jump out here and well you got to go buy a five to a ten to a twenty thousand dollar hog cooker first, mm-hmm. you know, unless you just had one handed down to your grandfather then. Well, I mean that that was my whole thing with the hog, you know, was just that factor of it. Yeah. That's it. I mean, it brings it back old school to me. It. I yeah. really wish that we could do almost do a hog shootout somewhere and we could get twenty five thirty teams at it. I would really like to see something like that, and maybe it's something that I have to put together one of these days. I don't know. Is is the pig jig the contest with the most hogs usually? Yes, it, they're the ones with the most hogs, but I don't have the accurate numbers yeah. for it. But, you know, 14 is going to be a huge number. Yeah, that's a lot. It was 28 last time I think I cooked the jig, and I've seen it as high as 31, 32 was about the that's average. When I won it, the jig, I know it was 96 rib teams one time. It was 112 rib team at one time. I have a question as far as talking about, you know, the teams that maybe they aren't educated, but they're trying to learn, trying to do it. So the NBN used to do what they called a boot camp. Right. Is there any talks of that ever coming back or maybe doing that ever again in the future? That that has. COVID, COVID set everybody yeah. back. Uh there are talks about doing that, but it, for for us, if a team wants to learn, the best they can, thing they can do is send a couple of their members through the yeah. judges' class. That's I, I agree with that. That's true. You y'all I, do y'all do. I will say, out of all the sanctioning bodies, I think MBN holds the best training for judges' class. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that. I, I really, and I've been to every one of them. I mean, I, I can. When I took the SCA judging class, I'm not trying to – I like the SCA. They do very well. I'm an SCA judge. So when you took it, did you feel like you got to explain the anatomy of a ribeye versus really how to judge a piece of meat? Uh, I learned more about ribeye meat than I learned about what I was looking for in a finished product. Me too, and we did not take it at the same time, so I'm glad you're sitting here agreeing with me on that. Yeah. That, that was my only downfall. I thought I was learning – and I worked in a meat market as a kid, so it was like repeated process to me hearing a lot of this kind of things. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's uh, And the SCA's done a phenomenal job as far as one-day oh, events. Man. I mean, my Talk Lord. They have just exploded. They have exploded. And that, that was one reason of me asking you about the one-day events. I've been telling Candace for a long time, I want to put together a rib shootout series. And I don't want to just hold one contest. I'm going to find the right partners, and I want at least to be three to five contests. Mm-hmm. And I would do it locally around here, or maybe even if it's something that we pair up with the NBN and add additional prize money, and and then we, you know, tap it on at several of events, and then we have a grand shootout event of our own, 
you know, for the top ten in each, or, you know, rib category or something. I don't know. We've got to figure out a lot. On we that. figure out a lot. I mean, that would be something perfect for a Friday. Yeah. And, you know, we we mentioned this at our last board of directors meeting that we'd love to bring back the invitational. You know, I would like yeah. to see that too. But still, you know, we're still trying to come back. We we lost some reps. We lost some founders. Uh, we added more people in. So we're still trying to make sure that we've got enough. If we exploded, we wouldn't have the people to handle it at the moment. But for me, it would be bring back the Invitational as a shootout, invitation only, and on-site prelims. And our judges' pro- program will handle all three judges at one time, which would be sweet. Then you wouldn't have to worry about the extra meat. That's a good point. Only a couple. Yeah. So you would send three judges at first. Right. And then if you made finals, you would send four judges, and you would turn in a blind box. Still turn in a blind box because those three judges will meet. They'll only be together at that first team. Then they'll split up and go and meet their other two partners. At another team gate. At another team. So it wouldn't really be like finals judges and – no, they wouldn't. They, wouldn't they would judge travel. separately. You just give your yeah. spill at one time yeah. versus. Makes right. sense. It, it actually the carrying on forty five minutes. It would just be a fifteen minute spill, basically. A fifteen yeah. minute spill, and then a third of the teams would get the first fifteen. A third would get the second fifteen, and a third would get the third. 15. You'd have a different time slot, basically, is right. how you just arranged that. It right. Makes perfect sense. Okay. Hmm. You know, you're laying awake at night trying to figure out how can we do this. That really is really the only way to make it work is to put it in a time slot figure because that way you use the same amount of judges you got and not exactly. trying to overpool your judges pool. Yeah. Smart, smart. Um, well, I guess you kind of answered my question on that. Is there anything new coming to the NBN or are you bringing back anything? It's kind of we're trying, you know, we are trying. When is the last invitational that was held? Gosh, was it at the casino? We had one on Tiger Lane. I remember the is last that, Tiger Lane. Yeah, I do too. I had the, you know, I was sick both, or, or the last two invitationals we cooked. You know, I was dead, I was deadly sick. You remember that? That I fought my way through it. I had the flu the whole time. We final in shoulder. We come in second. But the yeah, last invitational that sick. I remember us being at, it seems like was Tiger Lane, but I could be wrong. Yeah. But it was, there's so many, th- so many stories you could tell about at, at Harris when we had it down there in that parking lot. And uh, just something like the guy that comes in and drops off 30 porta potties at one end of the parking lot. Now we got to get them, organizers got to get them spread out. Well, the thunderstorm came up, and I'm sitting there looking out of the, the office, and all 30 porta potties <laughs> go to the other end of the parking lot. And I'm sitting there looking, I mean, they're all perfectly standing up. And just sliding across the parking lot. Slide across the parking lot. I thought, no, but I'm not going to say anything. They're going to think I'm crazy. <laughs> well, but wait, wait. The storm went by. The wind changed and blew them all right back up where they were. <laughs> so if I hadn't have seen them go down. <laughs> and go back, you wouldn't have known any difference. And that was before I started drinking, too. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, that brings me to a question now that you brought up that, that story and drinking. What? What is the craziest or weirdest thing that you've seen or heard of happening at an MBN contest in all your years of, of being around? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you don't have to say names. <laughs> yeah, you don't have I to would, use names. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to even describe it, but, I mean, me and Kelly did a barbecue contest in Miami where it was more like pigs. That's where they give all the wooden uh, cookers the the chihai boxes. Is that how you say it? The, the he, yeah, the, the aluminum cookers. Yes, they furnished them aluminum cooker, and you put the charcoal in the bottom. You put the the the, the, the pig on a rack like a ladder, so you can flip it back and forth. And you put a top on it, put more coal on top. Put more coal on top, and it was. Uh, we had to go out to the farm. The Cuban box, the Cuban, Cuban, Cuban box. style, yes. Yeah. 
uh, went out to the farm where they could pick out the pig on the hoof. Oh. And the pig goes up this chute. A, few, a little bit later, he comes out in a plastic bag down this chute. And away they go. I remember when y'all done that contest. Was so was that, right? that an MBN? Yes. It was an MBN. But oh, was it? That was probably it was, 2011, 2012, yeah, 2013. It was, yeah. It was uh, – we had a lot of conversations about the contest before, but it was all Cuban expatriates. It was 11 teams, and they all represented different provinces in Cuba. Gotcha. Uh, gosh, I, their sauce was some kind of a soured orange. Mojo. Something like that, yeah. Hmm. It was not good. Oranges and garlic and uh, all that. Mashed yeah. up big mop sauce, like big mop sauce, and then as far as following a timeline, you know where you, you know, if you cook it, we'll judge you. Because I don't speak Spanish, you don't speak English. We were doing the best we could, and because we just had them all in a semicircle, and the kids are playing, and they're all having a good time. <laughs> Kelly and. The chief fire marshal and one of the police officers, we would sit there at our scoring table, and when somebody was ready, they would walk over and judge the hog, the three of them. And then when the next one was ready, we would walk over and judge that hog. That was pretty wild there. But it was like, you know, you have to make do with what you got. What you got. And uh, it ended up being a a really – a great group of people and that was when we, we had uh, the invitational in madison mm, okay i remember that and that guy came really he was he won so the guy that won that came <laughs> and i told him when he came i go he learned a lot that day but when he came and he set up i said i'm glad you're here they're, they're, this is real friendly but you're up against uh, the best of the best, and they did. They finished dead last, but, I mean, it was still, he loved it. <laughs> he wouldn't have missed it for the world. Well, you know, I've had some incredible times cooking barbecue late at night and all that, and I did get in the swing of, you know, back when I would wrap a hog or wrap shoulders at 1030. That was my go time. I was walking out of the park at 1030, and yeah, I was going to be back the next morning at 530. I mean, you know, that we got into that regiment, and – uh you know, when it worked out like that, stay on that timeline, that's just, I don't know, that's crazy about the hogs. You're still blowing my mind about the, the judging. <laughs> so was that like just that. a one-time contest? That idea? was just a one-time contest. It never, uh, it had uh, the Miami Heat NBA team had some backing on this on this whole affair. It was, it was amazing. But, you know, as Kelly goes, this is not going to be like any other NBA. I said, no, but they want these hogs judged and we're here. And you be the lead judge, and the other two, you can lead them through it, and we'll get these hogs judged. That's right. That's right. Well, tell me, as looking back as a founder and president of EMBN now, if there was something you could change, what would it be? Going back through the years, you know what I mean? What would be a a major change or something you would have took a different road? What? I might have said, I remember saying when we were sitting together about doing this, I said, you know, we might be certifiable. And now, 17 years later, I'm pretty damn sure we are. (laughs) Well. But, I mean, no, it's, uh, I don't know that I, you know, change really anything. I just wish we had a, you know, if we could, we had a better relationship with Memphis in general. Maybe with Memphis and May, we don't have one. But, uh that's a good group and that's what they do. And we just try to carry it to a wider audience. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't, was Jim Holt there when yeah. all that happened? He was, like, yeah, I, he's been there as long as I can remember. Okay. I don't know Jim that well. Seems, you know, I've only had been very nice every time I've spoke with him a few times. I'd like to be able to reach out to somehow to get to a wider audience we had a barbecue contest scheduled for belvedere illinois just outside chicago but we never could get enough interest from the teams here because now you tack on a fuel bill to drive to chicago that doesn't make the long drive that's a long drive long drive yep 
Yeah, I think prize money and 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 driving and the cost of meat and let's face it, everything has went up. That's what Candace was saying a while ago. We all feel it every time we go to the grocery store, from eggs to milk or whatever. And I don't know. Looking at all those things, I'm really glad MBN did make the changes. You know, to prelims and stuff, especially how COVID hit. You know, I'm glad y'all really made that change before COVID. I well, mean, honestly, and, you know, we survived COVID. We came out on the other side. We did. You know, we didn't know whether we. I'm sure it was a not. scary moment. Yeah. You know, we were all worried about it. Uh, to be honest with you, yeah. um, I, I don't want to see it. I didn't want to see it go away. You know, I I, I was one of the first presidents, and then uh, stepped back and was on the board. Then. When I started traveling internationally a lot, I stepped completely out for a couple of years because I just had no time to do it. And now I'm back as president again, so we can. Uh, so now you're president, you just play golf, right? I do barbecue, eat barbecue, play golf, maybe sip on a bourbon. Nothing wrong. So with that. are the five couples that started this are still the current owners? No. No. Uh, okay. Maggie and Adam mm-hmm. uh, are one of the the co owners now. They gotcha. took uh, Mary and Frank. Frank. Oh, okay. Uh, Elise. Mm-hmm. It was Elise and Butch, but it's Elise now. Gotcha. And Suzanne mm-hmm. and Gary and Sharon. And then still me and Kelly. Okay. So a few changes there. A few changes. So Not we're just trying to, you know, we. We had toyed with going nonprofit where you've got to have, you know, elected board all the time. And we even tried to, to do like an executive board to help. But it, that, did, that didn't seem to work out. We uh, we had some board members of allegiance with KCBS, and that wasn't going to work at all. No, definitely understand that. Yeah. I mean, I... I guess the only thing that I could probably say in y'all's rules uh, that still lingers to me is the pork rule. You know, if you change it to pulled pork, mm-hmm. I think y'all have a weight rule now, right? Or but put back in place. I, I think you've changed. I have. I don't even know the current rule. Before I, I'd I have to that. go back and look at them too, to be absolutely honest. But I know everything kind of lines up with these dual contests except the pork rule, and that's why you see a lot of teams don't. They will cook a rib at a dual contest to these other other sanctioning body teams, but they don't cook the pork because of the rule change. I think now KCBS has changed their rule again, mm-hmm. and you can just cook money muscle if you want. It don't even have to be a pound anymore. Wow. wow. Yeah. Because pulled pork's pulled pork. And I'm going to be honest, it's harder to cook a pound muscle than it is a butt. But it takes less time. And you probably wouldn't believe that. But well, I, I'm, I could see where it would take less time. So it's really a lot of these guys have went to a lot of these companies started cutting these what they call CT butts. Mm-hmm. It's a money Small. muscle and it's that, and they're like this big around, mm-hmm. uh, about the like size of a VHS, I would say, but probably three VHS is thick, you know, for VHS yep. tape. And so you can imagine you can take and cook one of those in about four hours, right? And that's what a lot of these guys have went to is so we can get a little bit of pulled and get the money muscle off of it, and that's it. And so that's why KCBS kind of made that rule change, kind of just help with their cost as well, mm-hmm. um, is all. And I, I think that y'all are still, I don't know, five, six pounds or something. I don't know what it is. I'm not, I'm not sure what the weight is, but I mean, it's still, it's, uh, we, tr- we try to do that, but we want them to cook it the oh. best way they can. You know, it, it, you know, if they find out a better way to cook it and it makes a better product, then instead of saying, no, you got to cook it this way. Maybe we need to change the rule. Yeah, just say pull pork, no matter what. Right. We want we want we want uh, we want the best product you can make. That's exactly what we want. That's the only thing I've ever heard from any teams. You know, I've coached a lot of teams into cooking ribs at Murfreesboro and and South Haven. You know, other teams. Galax and and Galax and a lot of them have wound up filing their very first time because a lot of them are really good cooks. Right. They just are so scared of the Memphis side of the presentation side. And I tell a lot of them, it's just like inviting anybody over at your house for dinner. Just tell them how you cook their dinner. That's mm-hmm. it. From start to finish. I got this rib here. I use this kind of seasoning. Use this kind of wood, this kind of charcoal. Cooked it for this long. Sausage glazed it. Now you're here eating it. I mean, it's kind of <clears> just that simple. 
and and the presentation and appearance is not weighted like the flavor and tenderness right. and so everything else. That brings up a very good question. I lost my train of thought a while ago on the scoring process. What is exactly the breakdown of scoring as far as like taste, tenderness, and appearance? If you had weighted out uh, 40, 40, 20, uh, you know, 50, 40, 10, because. I want to say what? How much does the percentage of on site count to getting in the finals? Oh, to get you know, well, getting in the finals now it's a hundred percent. Yeah, but back in the day, wasn't it like sixty seven and a point eight percent or some something right. like that? We, we tried to make it fifty percent though, but so that it would all be even, because you had three and four judges. Now you've only got six uh, at the table, so we do go with six judges all the time. And yeah, I used to go with four. Used to go with four, and and judges will tell you, "Oh, I miss the on site. I miss the on site." And yeah, you miss the on site. We need a finals judge. You're in luck. You're in luck. Oh no, I can't eat that much. I can't eat that much. I'm like, excuse me. We put six samples on the table now. All right. So if you if you do two categories, you've ate. 12 times. If you do finals, you're only eating nine times. I, I, you're looking at 12 different teams versus nine different teams. That's right. And, well, I never thought of it that way. So, but, well, you you can kind of tell a seasoned judge from a younger judge. Uh, Memphis in May this year, uh, our first two people last that year. judged us, you know what last I'm about? Year. Last year. Yeah. Yeah, last year. Um, he ate the whole slab of ribs, Henry. Well, I've had the some. very first judge, <laughs> and then the second guy ate the whole slab. Right? I mean, it's good. I mean, oh yeah, they were they were good. <laughs> yeah, they're, good. But, they're good. And he's like, I mean, yeah. it, you, you, I didn't know what else to tell him, yeah. and I finally just stopped talking. He ate the whole slab, and I was like, man, you got to go to this next team. Your time is. I mean, you should have been there. You should be there right now. He's like, they can wait. These ribs are too good. <laughs> I mean, you know, you just don't see that. You know, no, with Memphis and no, Maggie trying to keep that. The, my other judge is standing outside the gate waiting to get in. So, you know how that is. So, very nice young kid. He did come back by the booth. I did get his 10 that day. But I sure thought when I was like, man, you got to go with another judge out here. But he ate the whole rack. And that is a lot to him eat. Him and his dad were from Chicago. Yeah. Where? Well, it is. Really? It's, uh, it's fun to see people enjoy it like that. It and is. that's what I, I think more so that at least we have some finals and nine teams get to experience that. So we do have some on site. I like the fact that we NBN teams are going to show up on Thursday or Friday and be set up and be cooking Friday night instead of just showing up Saturday morning early and I cramming it. it all in. I mean, it's again, like I said, I think it's an event. And it, it it can bring a whole town together. And, it definitely can. And the judges and the teams spend a lot of money in these towns where we hold these contests. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, you know, I don't think I have any more questions for you. Is Do you want to kind of give a shout-out to the NBN and kind of tell everybody where they can kind of find out more information? And Please go to our website at nbnbbq.com. We'd love to have you sign up for judges' classes, and if not, stop by any contest and ask for the MBN reps, and they will be glad to show you around and show you what it takes to be with the MBN contest. That's Thank right. you. And, and I would like to say anybody that's interested in the Memphis style of cooking knows I cut my teeth in it, and so I'm always willing to help anybody that has any questions as long on the cook side and give them any tips or tricks to get them along the way. And so uh, I just appreciate everybody listening in, and we'll see y'all next week for another episode of Shooting Super. the Q. Thank you for tuning in to the Shooting the Q podcast. If you have any comments or suggestions for future episodes, please feel free to reach out to us on our social media channels or through our website. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform. Leave us a review if you enjoyed the show. Until next time, keep shooting the cue.